What are you doing? Shh, he might hear you. Why are you breaking the piggy bank? I saw this thing on YouTube and Instagram. It says we have to get like Quan Pan, like Shuan Pan, like Chon Pan. I don't know. It's supposed to be amazing for our plants. You don't even know what it is. You're still a beginner. You're still on your spider plant. But YouTube and Instagram told me to get it. You know we don't have a corporate job anymore. We can't just be spending money like that. You're gonna get in trouble. What's going on in here, huh? It wasn't me. It was him. It was him. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I'm the crazy plant guy. And in today's video, I want to share with you guys how you can start your indoor jungle without necessarily breaking the bank. This is great for a lot of you guys who are just starting out your houseplant journey or who's looking at getting into the houseplant game. Maybe you've already started your research and browsing through Instagram and looking at big, beautiful, uncommon, expensive houseplants that you're tempted to want to get. Or you're browsing through YouTube videos and you think you need a lot more of these fancier, expensive type of potting soil. Or maybe it's decorative pots or propagation stations. Or you need a light meter or moisture meter. So there's a lot of ways you can obviously care for your houseplant and a lot of things you'll need to care for your houseplant. But the truth is it can also get quite expensive and it can also get away from you pretty quickly quickly, especially when you're a newbie. So what I want to do is cover ways on how you can start your indoor jungle, especially when you're on a budget. I want to cover everything from the type of plants you can get, alternatives to propagation stations or decorative pots, and the type of potting soil you can use to help you get through your first couple of years. Because another truth is you're most likely going to kill a plant or two, which is obviously part of the learning experience, but I also want to make sure that you don't go through a very expensive learning experience. So let's start with plants. Obviously, if you want to start an indoor jungle, you need some plants. And although you may be tempted to want to get big, beautiful, established plants to fill your home with, the truth is they are going to be a little bit more expensive than your smaller type of plants, like this pothos in a four inch container. You can easily find these at your big box stores and they'll obviously be a little bit cheaper, maybe a couple of dollars, depending obviously where you're located. And also stick to common plants like pothos, snake plants, even a pilea, a peperomia, an aloe. All of these are great, beautiful plants to start off with. Another cool thing about having smaller plants is the journey of caring for it and watching it grow and thrive to bigger plants. I mean, a neon pothos of this size in a couple of years can grow to be this big, trailing on top of this bookshelf, or you can have it climbing up like this golden pothos on a moss pole. This took about two years to grow, but it did start off as a small plant in a four inch container. So you don't necessarily need to jump the gun and get these big, beautiful plants, especially a lot more of these uncommon or rare plants because they do carry a higher price tag. Another tip as well too, when you are shopping for plants is try to do it maybe near the end of the season because oftentimes a lot of the stores will discount their plants. Or what you can do is also check to see if they got any plants that are not in good shape that may be in the back or hiding somewhere in the corner. Oftentimes those plants will also be discounted. Another affordable way to grow your indoor jungle is through plant trades. So what you want to do is establish a relationship with a few people within your local plant community through Instagram or Facebook and you want to exchange some of your cuttings for theirs. Not only is it a great way to obviously grow your indoor jungle, but also a great way to make some new friends. So definitely encourage you guys to try that approach. So those are just a few ways you can start growing your indoor jungle without necessarily spending a lot of money. Now the next thing you're going to need are pots, either nursery pots or decorative pots. And most plants you buy at the shop will already be in a nursery pot. And nursery pots are great because they do come already with drainage holes. So that way when you do water your plant, the water will drain through, which is very important when it comes to watering your plants is you want to make sure that water drains through because if the water is not draining through you guys know water will just be sitting there in the pot and it can cause root rot and eventually your plant will die which is one of the reasons why I always have my plants in a nursery pot and then I have them in a decorative pot now you don't need to have decorative pots you know obviously decorative pots is an additional cost but if you are wanting some decorative pots you can definitely check your local flea market or local dollar store or winners or you know, home scents, and you can usually find affordable decorative pots, obviously depending on your style or your taste. Another way to save money when it comes to your pots is, you know, reuse and recycle a lot of the nursery pots you have. So when it comes time to repotting your plant, you obviously want to move them up to a bigger size. And then you want to make sure you keep your old nursery pots just in case you get another smaller plant that can use that nursery pot. So you want to make sure you don't throw these guys away because I collected a whole bunch and every single one of them I've used. Yes, it may be another reason for you to get another plant because that pot is empty. But uh, again, it's a great way to obviously, you know, recycle, reuse, and 
obviously not spend a lot more money on getting a few of these nursery pots. Now, for those of you guys who don't want to use nursery pots and you want to plant your plant directly in a decorative pot, but your decorative pot doesn't have any drainage holes, you can go through drilling them. There's a lot of DIYs on YouTube on how you can do that. And again, it's another way to obviously save money because you won't need a nursery pot and you can just plant it directly in the decorative pot. Or what you guys can do is check your dollar store. Um, I found this white um, pot. It looks decorative from <laughs> where you guys are obviously watching, but this is actually a plastic nursery pot that is in colors. I have them in white, gray, blue, I think turquoise. And you know, it looks pretty cool and you can make drainage holes on these pretty easily. And I think three of these four inch ones uh, cost me like $1.50. So very, very affordable and they look pretty good too. So again, don't be afraid to uh, use items at your dollar store. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I shop at the dollar store all the time. Now let's talk about propagation stations. So during your house plant journey, you're gonna wanna propagate a few plants, which is also another great way to expand your plant collection or grow your inner jungle is through cutting up your plants and growing them from a cutting. Depending on the plant, there's a few methods you can go about propagating your plants. The most common ones are propagating in water. So you're often gonna find, you know, creators out there suggesting to get some propagation stations like the ones you see here, but the reality is you don't need this. All you really need is a place that holds water and then put your cutting in there. So for example, taking a pothos cutting where you cut, you know, below the node that you guys see here. Simply just get a jar with water. I've reused mason jars as propagation station or old candle votives that you guys can easily, you know, boil some hot water to remove the leftover wax that's in there. Or you can use some plastic water bottles, easily cut these guys up like you see here, put some water in there and then place your cuttings. Or worse comes to worse, use your drinking glass, which I've used in the past before. Again, you don't necessarily need to jump the gun and get yourself some fancy propagation stations, although they do look nice. But again, there's ways to obviously do this a little bit more affordable. Now let's talk about potting soil and potting mix, which is obviously what you're going to need when you are growing indoor jungle, especially when it's time to repot a lot of your plants. However, you don't necessarily need to jump into a lot of these fancy and expensive potting mix like coco core, you know, orchid bark, expandable clay, activated charcoal, leca pond, all of these things that you may not necessarily need, especially when you are starting out your houseplant journey. And especially when you don't understand some of these items because they do have a purpose depending on obviously the plant and what you're trying to achieve with that plant. These items can get really expensive. So what I always suggest when you are starting out is stick to something simple and basic all purpose potting soil. I used miracle Grow potting soil or cacti soil as my base, especially when I started out, and I still use it to this day. So you can easily get away with a lot of your plants using this type of potting soil and potting medium. And the only thing I would suggest is get some perlite to obviously add a bit more drainage to your potting soil. So normally what I would mix is maybe like 60% potting soil and then 40% perlite or 50-50, again, depending on obviously your habit and your style of watering and also that type of plant but there's nothing wrong with this potting mix. Easy, affordable, and honestly, it does the job, it does the trick. And if you do wanna venture into a lot more of those different types of potting mix, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Only thing I suggest is do your research, make sure you understand what each of those items does for your plant, and obviously how to use it. Now let's talk about lighting and watering, which are obviously important for your plants to thrive and grow. Natural light is free, so as long as you obviously have a window and a great view of that sky for your plants to thrive and soak in that sun, which is going to be great and they're gonna love it. However, if your home doesn't get good natural lighting and you think you may need some artificial light like grow lights to supplement you know, the low light in your home, I suggest shopping around on Amazon or online for like full spectrum light bulbs. You can easily replace your light bulbs in your home, whether it's on the ceiling or lamp. With these full spectrum light bulbs, obviously depending on the brand, they can get a little bit expensive, but oftentimes you can find cheap ones like Miracle LED, which I've used in the past as well to kind of replace a few of my light bulbs in more of my darker areas of my home, like in my den, for example. Um, watering, obviously, as long as you pay your watering bills, water should be free, tap water is okay. However, some plants are quite finicky, like calatheas or marantas, and they usually prefer like more distilled or filtered water or rainwater. So ways to obviously get those types of water without spending money is, you know, have some tap water, let it sit there for 24 hours, or use like a, a Brita. Again, it's not gonna get rid of all these other chemicals that's in there. Or you can collect rainwater. If it rains a lot where you are, you can put a bin out there and collect rainwater, which is great for your plants. They will love it. Or you can make distilled water, and there's a lot of videos on how to make distilled water. Unfortunately, the process just takes long, so you do just wanna keep that in mind. 
But um, yeah, so those are just ways to kind of save money when it comes to lighting and watering. Now let's talk about some planty tools that you may come across like a moisture meter. So a moisture meter is great to obviously determine whether your plants are dry and need to be watered or they're a little bit more wet and don't need to be watered. And moisture meter is good for those of you guys who struggle with identifying if your plant needs to be watered or not. Now, I always suggest start off with using a toothpick or a chopstick or use your finger to stick this obviously into the soil of your plant and then pull it out. If there's soil sticking to this in clumps and you feel that it's wet, it obviously is still wet and your plant doesn't need to be watered. However, if it's dry, in addition to the pot being light, then obviously your plant needs to be watered. And a lot of people do struggle in determining whether their plant needs to be watered or not. So I do suggest getting a moisture meter. They are a little bit more affordable and it will save you in the long run, especially if you can't tell when to water your plant using your finger or a chopstick, because most likely you're probably going to end up killing that plant from overwatering or underwatering. So a moisture meter will save you money in the long run. Now let's talk about tools like hygrometers or humidifiers. Hygrometer measures the humidity level in your home while a humidifier obviously increases the humidity levels in your home. Depending on where you live, if you live in a climate that already gets natural, you know, humid environment, then you don't need any of these tools. But if you live in an area that's a little bit more drier, like where I live, then you may want to invest in a humidifier. However, you may not necessarily need a humidifier, especially if you don't have any plants that require high humid environment to thrive like calatheas, marantas, or ferns, which is another reason why I also say to my newbies, you know, avoid those plants because they are a little bit more fussier, a little bit more difficult to take care of. You know, you will lose them, especially if you don't have the right environment. So you can save some money by not buying those plants and also save some money by not necessarily getting a humidifier for them. However, if you want those plants, you know, I suggest you use the pebble and tray trait to kind of help increase the humidity if you don't want to spend money on humidifier. But if you do want those plants bad, if you want them to thrive, you will need to increase the humidity in your home get a humidifier or get a mini greenhouse so that way you can trap the humidity for them. Uh, but yeah, so those are just uh, some tools you may come across. Now, when you're growing plants indoors, chances are you will come across pests. Fungus gnats is a common one. Mealybugs are common ones. And then you get into like thrips or aphids or spider mites. Again, depending on the type of plants, some plants attract certain pests. And obviously you wanna make sure your plants are healthy because pests can kill your plants. And then again, you'll have to spend money to kind of replace that. So what you wanna do is obviously get on top of your pest control and management. So the most cost-effective way to prevent pests from your plants is give your plants a good shower and spray, you know, at least every two weeks. And that's just pretty much taking a high pressure hose or spray bottle Bottle and giving your plant a nice good shower. You now the pressure will obviously wash off any pests that's crawling on your plants like spider mites, you know, aphids or mealybugs. Get in the habit of wiping down the leaves with a nice wet cloth so that way again you're wiping away those bugs that may be crawling in there. You know, however, if you are starting to notice, you know, some, you know, spider mites on there or mealybugs, you can use rubbing alcohol that you have in your household. Get a Q-tip, dip it in rubbing alcohol, and then, you know, target those mealybugs. You can also make your homemade pesticide by mixing a bit of rubbing alcohol, dish soap, warm water, shake that up in a spray bottle, and then, you know, spray your plants as kind of a way to deter pests or uh, a way to kind of stay on top of them. When it comes to fungus gnats, we carry those like black little fruit flies that are flying around your plant. Ways to trap them without getting those sticky traps and spending money on is if you have leftover wine which I know nobody has leftover wine but you know something that's sweet like apple cider vinegar that you can mix with maybe dish soap and water place around your plant those fungus gnats are flying will be attracted in there and they will drown and then obviously if you have hydrogen peroxide it's a great way to kind of clean the root system in your plants especially if there's any larva or eggs that's in there uh, you can use it with your watering can mix a bit of your water so next time you water your plant it has a bit of that hydrogen peroxide and it'll clean away uh, all the stuff that's in those soils but yeah so there you guys have it those are just a few suggestions on how you can start growing an indoor jungle without necessarily spending a lot of money especially when you're a newbie because it can be a very expensive hobby and your first year or two you're pretty much just learning so i want to make sure that you are learning on a budget for those of you guys who have a bit more experience comment below and share some of your suggestions tips on tricks on how you can grow your indoor jungle on a budget other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.